Okay, hello everyone. This is the presentation for the pre-training team. I'm Hong Yi Li from National Taiwan University, and it's my great pleasure to give the presentation representing this excellent team. I will introduce the senior member when we go deep into the technology part. But before that, I have one page talking about what is pre-training to make sure everyone is on the same page. So in general, pre-training means you have some unlabeled data and we use those unlabeled data to train a model which develop general purpose knowledge. And keep in mind that pre-training is task agnostic. The model should develop general purpose knowledge and it can be used for a wide range of different applications. So after you have a pre-training model, you do fine tuning, for example, you want to solve task one, then you have a little bit label data for task one to modify the pre model a little bit, and hopefully it will be good at, the model will be good at task one. And you have task two, also a little bit, a little bit label data, you fine tune your model a little bit, then it can solve task two. And hopefully with this pre-training technology, the model learn from a large amount of unlabeled data, then it can deal with different tasks with less label data. And this idea today, some people also call it self-supervised learning, SSL. And this idea has been widely explored in the speech community. For pre-trained model, there are, a, there are many different pre-trained models trained from, from different objectives. And just here, I just list some of its name. This is not a complete list. And those models have been used in a wide range of different applications, including speech recognition, speaker, uh, speaker recognition, and so on. And probably some of you have recognized a benchmark corpus for self supervised learning called Superb, Speech Processing Universal Performance Benchmark. In this benchmark, we have evaluated self supervised model on a wide range of different speech related tasks including speech processing tasks of many different aspects. Here, I list some of the tasks which has been evaluated in the superb benchmark. And you can check this web page to see the leaderboard, and you can find that those sales supervised model, usually they are very universal. One model is trend with task agnostic, but it can solve a wide range of different tasks with fine tuning. So this is the power. So the sales supervised learning is very powerful. And some people probably think sales supervised learning is just for big company because today those sales supervised learning, they are gigantic. For small player, uh, for example, for academia, it's probably impossible to train a sales supervised model from scratch. But why we also need to care about uh, sales supervised learning? And here is a metaphor. So consider the pre model as operating system. Today on your cell phone, there are operating systems like Android or iOS. And those operating systems cannot be built by single developer because they are very sophisticated. They can only be built by big company. However, today, everyone, if you want to add a new functionality to your cell phone, you can build an application by yourself because operating system have already deal with the most sophisticated thing to communicate with the hardware. So it is easy for an individual to develop your application on your cell phone. And operating system is pre model and the application is the downstream test people are really care about. So pre-training is actually good for small player. With pre-training, for a downstream task you want to solve, we need less label data and less computation. So it's good for small player. So this is why we form a team and we want to do more study about this fancy technology. And this is good. This is the goal of the pre-training team. We have four targets. One is we want to understand how to better use of your sales supervised model. There are already lots of existing model and lots of people are using it, they achieve good performance. But do we really make the most out of them? We are going to study how can we 
use those models in the most effective way. Then we are going to enhance those sales supervised model. They already achieve good performance. They are good, but they still have some weakness. And we are going to improve sales supervised model from different aspects. And we are going to push those sales supervised model to their limits. We are going to try those sales supervised model to explore more tasks that people have never tried before. And, and we are going to have a toolkit to support the community, to support community to leverage, to build sales supervised models better. So this is the goal of our team. So let's start from, uh, let's talk about the uh, technical detail. Let's start from how to better use sales supervised model. And this is the team member working on this direction. And Daniel Shangwen Lee will lead the effort of how to leverage the existing sales supervised model. So how to use the sales supervised model? How to use those pre-trained model? Today, the most typical way, of course, most of people know that is fine tune the whole model. For each application, no matter is ASR, speaker identification, or slot fitting, here is your pre model, and you add a downstream model on top of the pre model, and you fine tune both the downstream model and the pre model. For each task, you will fine tune the model, and you will get a new set of parameters for a specific task. The problem of this framework is if you fine tune a model for all the different tasks, then you need to store a gigantic pre model for all the tasks. If you have 100 different tasks, then you have to store 100 different sets of parameters. And since those sales supervised models are very big, they are, they, are, they are giant, so you cannot really do it. You cannot store 100 different copies of the model. It's not an efficient way. So there's another idea we are going to explore is using the adapter. Uh, the basic idea of adapter is insert small module into the picture model. So for ASR, it has its own adapter, SID has its own adapter, and SLU has its own adapter. And we will fix the parameter of the sales supervised model and only train the adapters for each task. In this way, for all the different tasks, you only have to store a very small adapter. So 100 different tasks, you only have to store 100 small adapters. And here is some uh, preliminary result to show you the effectiveness of adapter. Uh, this is some unpublished preliminary result. We try different types of adapter. Actually, there are many different types of adapter, adapters. I do not have time to go through them today. So we try different types of adapter on Huber for ASR test. And we found that here the vertical axis is word error rate and the horizontal axis is the number of adapter the number of parameters you have to fine tune for a specific task. So if what you do is fine tuning the whole model, of course you have to fine tune a lot amount of parameter and you get the performance, get the word error rate at here. And for some of the adapters, you only have to fine tune very little amount of parameter, but get performance even better than fine tuning the whole model. And I have to emphasize that here, the horizontal axis is in log scale. So this tells you how much difference between the small, the number of parameter of small adapter and the number of parameter for fine tuning the whole models. And uh, in the next six weeks, we plan to study more different kinds of adapter on various sales supervised model for a wide range of different applications. And besides adapter, we are also explore a very crazy idea, which is prompting. Prompting means we don't even change the parameter of sales supervised model. What we only did is we modify the input signal. We modify the input to make the pre-trained model output differently and it can work in on different tasks. So for ASR, you have a specific prompt and you add this type of signal as your input, then the model will work in on ASR. And you add another prompt, then the model will work in on speaker identification. This sounds a pretty crazy idea, the C work. Based on our uh, pre-workshop discussion, we already published a paper accepted by Industry 2022. And you can check the archive link here to see how good it will be. 
Okay, so this is about how to leverage sales supervised model. And those sales supervised model today, they still have some weakness. And in the workshop, we are trying to enhance those sales supervised model to make that even better. And we target three different directions. One is more efficient model. The second is model with better generalization capability. And the third one is visual enhanced models. For the first one, more efficient, uh, this, is, uh, this research effort is leading by senior member, Hao Tang from University of Edinburgh, Lucas from Sonos, and Diego from UTEP. And as you know, larger model lead to better results. This is a common sense, everyone know that. And here I get some results from the super leaderboard. And here I show the result of many different models on intern classification, speaker identification, and speech recognition. And here the horizontal axis is the number of parameter of this model. And it is clear that with more parameter, better intern classification accuracy, more parameter, better uh, speaker identification accuracy, and more parameter, smaller for error rate. It is clear that larger model achieve better performance. However, can we make those sales supervised model more efficiently? Can we create some small model, but still achieve the same performance? This is what Hao Tang is working on. And we are trying to, we, we also noticed that there's already some effort in the community try to have a smaller model. And we are also working on this direction. Hopefully we can move the point on this figure to the even left, uh, down left, the left corner side. And here is several technology we are trying, uh, including noise distillation, low range, low range approximation, head pruning, weight pruning. And I'm going to especially highlight two research direction because they are highly related to the characteristic of speed signal. So the first one is, we call it male Huber. And as you know, in Huber, it has CNN encoder and several layers of transformer. The, the question here, the research question here is, do we really need CNN encoder? CNN encoder actually takes 33% computational overhead. Although it's not a very big model, it takes 33% computational overhead. Do we really need it? How about we just take male spectrogram as input and use transformer to deal with the input male spectrogram. And how is leading this effort when we already see some promising results. And another research direction, which is highly related to speech is about sequence reduction. So as you know, today, those cell supervised model, it track friend-wise representation. It's a very long sequence. Given alternates, it track a very long sequence. And each transformer will uh, understand the whole sequence, process the whole sequence, but the input and output of a transformer layer, the sequence, it has the same length. And what we are working on is we are going to insert a sequence reduction module between the transformer layer. The sequence reduction module will shorten the sequence, but still keep the most useful information. This is not typical down sampling. The down sampling will be non-uniform, we make the sequence shorter, but keep the useful information. And hopefully for the following layer, there will be less computation effort. So hopefully with these two direction I just mentioned, removing CNN and uh, sequence reduction module, we can have a model which is more efficient. And there's other effort about efficient pre-training and Lucas will working on an efficient network ar architecture so as you know, self-attention is mostly used in today's picture model and self-attention is not the most efficient way to consider the whole sequence. So Lucas is uh, leading the effort to explore more efficient architecture, for example, FNet. And Diego is working on more efficient weight initialization. As you know, pre-training model is used as the initialization of downstream test. But when you train the pre-training model, you also need another initialization to train the pre-training model. And Diego, his expertise is 
model initialization. He has lots of work about initialized uh, image processing model, and he's going to transfer his experience from image to self supervised pitch speak model. He's going to develop some method uh, to develop some way to better initialize the self supervised model to make it trend more efficiently. And let's move to the second aspect to make the model become more generalized. So uh, the senior member in this research effort is me and Yu Zhang from Google. And here is our, uh, here is what we are going to explore. As you know, in the pre-training, you have a pre trained model and you have a downstream test. And in downstream test, you have some label data and some testing data. And it is very usual that your label data and the testing data lay from different domain. They have domain mismatch. For domain mismatch, it can be if we, there, there's many different scenario, including speech distortion, speaking style difference, accent, dialect, or languages. And we want to know that it can self supervised learning, can self supervised model deal with this kind of situation. If the label data and the testing data are from the, the different domain in the downstream test, can self supervised models still work well? So this is the first research question. And we already get some preliminary result. We try to analyze the simple situation is if your label data is clean data, but your testing data at some distortion, then what would happen? And we tried five different downstream application, including intent classification, emotion recognition, keyword spotting, speech identification, and speech recognition. And here, clean means your testing data is clean speech. Of course, you get some good performance when your testing data and training data are both clean. But if your label data is clean speech and your testing data have different types of distortion, then what would happen? We tried two types of distortion. The detail is not very important here. Okay, we tried different types of distortion and we can find that the performance of those sales supervised model degrades seriously with even very simple speech distortion. Uh, we will explore other distortion. For example, we will explore other domain mismatch in the following six weeks. Here we just starting from the speech distortion and found that those models are not, 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 they are not actually very general. They, they are the generalization capability can still be improved. And based on our discussion before the workshop, we do have some idea. We continuously train those pre-trained model with some noisy data. And we found that this approach is actually very useful. And we do have a paper accepted by Interspeech 2022. And you can find the result of the paper here. And the uh, uh, continuous pre-trained model is actually public available. So everyone can use it. Originally, I plan to show some number from our Interspeech paper, but I think probably I can show it in a different way. Do you remember this leaderboard? Because this is the this handcrafted leaderboard is what we used last Friday in our Hanang lab. And last Friday, we have a challenge about few shot and very noisy spoken language understanding test. And we ask people to pick your sales supervised model yourself to get the best performance. And the model we publish in Interspeech is actually the model people pick to get the best performance. So this shows that this model is useful. Okay, in the following six weeks, we will explore more different domain mismatch. And we will especially focus on the generalization capability of those compressed pre-trained model. Why we highlight compressed model? This is because we found that uh, the compressed model has worse generalization capability based on some preliminary experiment. So if we compare Huber and its North Destillation version, we found that even though this is just one example for keyword spotting, but you can find very similar results in other tasks, for example, in keyword spotting for clean speech, Huber and distilled Huber, they have very close performance. However, if you add some noise to your testing set, then their performance has a gigantic gap. Even though their performance is close to each other for clean speech, when it comes to noisy speech, they have significant difference. So this is why we consider we will 
highlight the uh, generalization, improve the generalization capability of compressed pretrained model. Okay, then let's move to the third aspect. We are going to work in on visually enhanced self-supervised model. And this research effort is driven by David Howard. And here, what we are going to do is until now, we only pretrain our model by speech data. But this is not what human baby learns, right? As you know, when human learn our language, we're not only listening, but we also see. So the research idea here is if we have some associated image for the speech signal, can model leverage those information and make it understand the speech signal better in a self-supervised way or in an unsupervised way? And here is some, of course, lots of, there is, there's already some pre, previous study about visually enhanced pretrained speech model. And one representative one is from Davis group, is FAST VGS, and David bring this uh, model to the workshop. And this model shows some good performance on the superb benchmark, but it still has some weakness. It is still struggle on some tests like ASR. So what we are going to do in the workshop is how to further improve those visually grounded pretrained model. One idea is besides consider speech and image, people learn not only from listening, seeing, but also reading. So there's a model called CLIP. It's a large pretrained model, include image and text pair data. And can this model put more information to the pretrained speech model. Of course, I have to highlight that here, the text and the speech signal, they are not paired. If they are paired, this is supervised learning problem. It's nothing interesting. They are not paired. We have speech and associate image, text and associate image. How can we leverage this setup to make this visual enhanced model to be universal on a wide range of different tasks? And this is the, basic idea and due to time limitation, I'm not going to go through the detail. David is here, so if you have, if you want to learn more, you can talk to David. And uh, basically the research question is, can we use the clip image and text encoder as teacher model for speech encoder like Hubert? And we already see some promising results on the superb test and some promising results for unsupervised ASR and we think probably it can also be helpful for unsupervised speech translation. And another, another model David bring to this workshop is VG Hubert. And this model have very outstanding detecting and segmenting uh, capability for unlabeled speech signal. Uh, it achieves several SOTA on the benchmark corpus about word segmentation and word detection. And here is the figure from their paper and you can find that the model is very good at identifying the word boundary and is very good at detecting the words. And how are we going to leverage VG Huber? There are several things we can leverage this outstanding detecting and segmenting capability. One is with those automatically word segmentation, this, this model may enhance the non-uniform sampling of space signal. Remember that how it is leading an effort, working on reducing the sequence of the, uh, 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 the, the uh, working on reducing the very long input sequence and probably word segmentation can be helpful in this scenario. And this discover word segment or cluster, they can be the target of Hubert to make a trend and even better sales supervised model. And this discover word segment and this technical work can Im probably improve the unsupervised speech recognition. And I will going to talk about why we need unsupervised speech recognition later. Okay, so this is three direction about enhanced sales supervised model. Then let's talk about push the limits of sales supervised model to the task it has never tried. There are two direction. One is precisely related task. Um, there are already lots of tasks which, which explode in the super benchmark but we have never tried positive related tasks. Will still supervised model work in positive related tasks? This research effort is leading by Nigel Wong from UTEP. Before we try still supervised model on positive related tasks, the first research question is, 
still sell supervised model is trade positive information. They are not trained for trade positive information. So probably they, they cannot recognize what is positive. But we already have some preliminary experiment. So what we have done is uh, from speed signal, we extract the positive information like pitch and energy. And we also use the pre model to extract some representation. And we train a linear classifier. This approach is well known as probing. We do probing. We do probing to probe the representation to see whether they include pitch and energy information. And here is the result. The short answer to the question on the title is, do sales supervised model extract positive information? The short answer is yes. Okay, so here is some values. So here the smaller number represent better reconstruction result, better reconstruction of pitch or energy. So here the smaller, small, smaller number represent the representation include more pitch or energy information. And here we have explored several models include FN, typical acoustic feature without pre-training, Huber, web to vec web to vec 2.0. And from this table, it is very clear that uh, you can extract positive information, pH or energy easier from those pre-trained model compared with FN. So it looks like those cell supervised representation, they include positive information. And something we will do in the future is here now our analysis only limited to English. And of course, we are going to explore our investigation. For example, we will, if we will investigate more different languages. And we are also working on positive related downstream tests. We want to know whether those sales supervised model can work well on the downstream test, which is considered as positive uh, intensive. And this is some of the application downstream tests we are targeting, uh, including pitch and energy prediction, sentiment analysis, sarcasm detection, persuasive prediction. And we already see some uh, very promising preliminary results. And another set of tasks we are going to try is about spoken language understanding. The idea is here. And this, is, this research effort is led by Andy from Meta and Paula from JQ. And we are going to use those sales supervised model for spoken language understanding. But as you know, those sales supervised model, they are not good at extract semantic information. Uh, there's already some literature analyze what is learned from the sales supervised model. And there's little evidence that those sales supervised model extract fruitful semantic information. They extract a little bit, but not much. So they are not very good at spoken language understanding tests. But on the other hand, there are a set of pre-trained text models like BERT. Those models, they are good at understanding. They are good at understanding the semantic behind the human language, but they cannot process speech data. How can we put them together to make the most out of that? So this is the idea. A very intuitive way is Let's concatenate the pre-trained speech model and pre-trained text model together. However, they cannot be directly concatenated in a trivial way because the output of the pre-trained model and the input of the pre-trained text model, they are in different space. If we directly concatenate them, probably this is not the optimal way. We can leverage the both models. So what we are going to do is add an adapter layer between the output of the sales supervised speech model and the input of the pre-trained text model. And of course, there are some related work, but different from the related work here, we do not use any speech and text pair data, and we are going to leverage the pre-trained model. So we are only going to leverage the pre-trained speech model and pre-trained text model, and without any label data, hopefully we can put them together and they can solve a wide range of spoken language understanding tests. And this is the idea. We are going to consider the pre-trained speech model with the adapter as a game based on supervised ASR model. So with a set of unlabeled text data, then we can make the output of the adapter in the same space as the input of the pre-trained text model. And Jatong already reproduced the web 2 vec 2.0. So 
we, are, we can already make the pre model with adapter output something close to the input of the pre text model. And we are working something more, including try more sales supervised speech model and using more robust visual enhanced model and using the sequence reduction technique in the adapter. So we are going to put them together and we can use them in spoken language understanding tasks. Okay, so this is about put the limits of the push the limits of sales supervised model. And the fourth direction is about toolkit. So uh, probably you have noticed that there is a toolkit called S3PRL, sales supervised speech pre-training and representation learning. And we are very happy that uh, Su Wen Yang, the main creator of this toolkit can be here with us for six weeks. And this toolkit support a wide range of different pre model and a wide range of downstream tasks. And it's very handy if you want to do something related to sales supervised learning, this is probably the toolkit you can try first. And it has some users, it already get more than 1000 star on the GitHub, but it can be better. And I believe during the workshop, uh, there will be lots of feedback and requests for Su and Liu Yang, and he's going to reconstruct S3PIL to make it more reusable and more flexible and can support more pre-training and more downstream tasks. So this is what Leo will going to do in the next six weeks. Okay, so this is the four goal, four goals I'm going to share with you for this team. And thanks to our advisor, Shinji, Bubana, and Nancy for all the uh, very good suggestion. And last but not least, uh, Superb has a challenge in SLT. Um, so if you are working on sales supervised model, submit your sales supervised model to the Superb challenge. And definitely our team will submit something to this challenge to show that we get some good performance. Okay, so this is the web page and our Twitter for the team. Please follow us on the Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we take questions, let's try to solve that audio issue. Okay. So my feeling is that you are not sharing your Zoom audio with the room. Oh, really? really? So is there something we can do in Zoom to, uh, or maybe your computer? audio preferences uh I'll, what are these choices can you tell me what these are i'm not sure but probably we can is there an hdmi here somewhere uh no in the audio <laughs> output for the zoom yeah probably we can try this no, one is that the input or the output oh no 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 now now they have audio hello hello yes i can hear you remote audience so where is the output from zoom going No, it should be right here. Yeah. I, I think it's good because this can is. Can you hear me? So if Yenda hello, hello. speaks, can, no, no, if Yenda speaks, we should be able to hear it. Okay, so. So let's just. Okay. Yeah. No, no, let's just, I can't read the Chinese. Okay. Address, so tell me what this says. Which is the output? Uh, is, uh, I'm going to put it over here. Okay, but it's also pretty random for me. It's, okay. it's, it's Chinese, but I, I do okay. not know what that means. Uh, Yenda, go ahead and speak. So let's, I think we can hear you. I was speaking just okay. two minutes ago. Okay. Excellent. Now we can hear you. So we're good. All right. Okay. So let's oh, take questions. Like I am not important. The questions are important. Yes. You are a test case. Thank you. Go ahead. Questions. Or online. Um, I have a question. Yeah, let's see. Yes, Alan, please go ahead. Um, I have a question about the prosody stuff. This might be a question really to Nigel. If you're going to do pre-training with interesting speech that has interesting prosody and you list a bunch of data sets which do have interesting prosody, do you need to only train on that data or find some um, curriculum training between standard audiobook or whatever other speech and prosody interesting speech how are you going to make a decision to be able to have a pre-trained model that's going to be sensitive to prosody without having 3000 hours of interesting prosody speech okay so this is a very good question uh, originally nigel's plan is we can have a pre-trained model which is specifically designed to extract the prosody 
But here in the preliminary stage, what we do is let's just see whether the existing model trend on libre speech, like whether they can extract positive information. I know they are not trend on, they are just trend on audio book and in their objective, we do not consider anything related to positive, but to our surprise, they do extract positive information. So mm -hmm. this is our preliminary, preliminary stage. But the question we haven't explored is to extract more positive information, what do we need? Or if a model is trained on English data, then we provided, for example, Mandarin, the language, the tonal language, can this still extract positive information? This is something we are going to explore in the next six weeks. I, I hope this answers Alan's question. Yes, thank you. That's good. And you answered my other question, which is what other languages are you going to consider? And Mandarin seems a perfectly reasonable one to look at. So that's good too. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. There was one question from Lauren. Lauren, do you want to ask him online? Uh, sure, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, hi, everyone. Uh, I had a question about the prompting part. Uh, so, you mentioned that you want to use prompting. And prompting is based on the in-context learning property of the very large models. So we know for text that it appears with very large models, like beyond 1 billion parameters. So I was wondering if you plan to work with very large speech model, or if you hope that prompting will also work for smaller speech models. Sorry, I do not really get the question. You mean prompting? Do you mean the prompting for positive or? Uh... No, no. So the, the earlier part, you mentioned that you would like to use modifying the output without changing the model to solve different tasks. So you mentioned prompting as a possibility for that. So ASR versus multiple tasks, you said you can prompt for different tasks for ASR or Oh, I got it. I got it. Prompting. Okay. So, and yes, and my question was, okay, uh, we know for text that prompting uh, uh, is due to the in-context learning property of very large models. So my question was, do you plan to work on very large models beyond 1 billion parameter, or do you hope that prompting will work for smaller speech models? Okay, so this is a very, very good question. At the very beginning, we want to see oh, whether we can have something like GPT-3, we can do in-context learning but then we found that those speech model, they are still too small compared with those text model. Probably they, are, they do not really have the capability of pumping. And if you read this paper, uh, you can find that actually what we did is different from what you imagine. And it's actually different from what I show on this figure. Our original plan is we modify the input signal. So the prompt is, a small input signal and it can influence the output of the model. But in the end, we never get it work. It doesn't work, okay? Then what we do is in, in, in this interspeech paper is we take the GSLN, a model trend based on the unit of Huber. And what we add is the Huber unit. And we found that in this approach, we can get some task work, we get some decent performance on intent classification and on keyword spotting, but the performance on ASR phoneme recognition are still very poor. So there's still a very long way to go. Our ultimate goal, but probably this cannot be achieved in this workshop, probably this will be achieved five years after is, we have a very gigantic model and it can do in-context learning as what GPT-3 do, but this is the ultimate goal. So now what we are working on is try to fix the performance of phoneme recognition and ASR. They are still, we only get 40% war error rate is very poor compared with uh, the state of the art. So we are trying to make the prompt approach more efficient to get better performance. So this is the first stage. Then probably we will move to whether we can, in, instead, of, instead of modify the Huber token, then can we modify the input signal? And if this also, also done, probably many years after, we can try in context learning. But we are still far from late, there yet. I hope I answer your question. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Lord. Okay, Jintao, I, sorry, let, let's take the last online question. Jintao, can you ask, please? 
Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Okay. It's just fast. Thanks. So I guess any questions in the room? Is there a question in the room? Yeah. Um, I had a question about the point you made about the one of your post about testing and testing the generalizing algorithm. Yes. Uh, Plaintiff's term optimization, so I mean, general uh, compression of these models, proving a quantization solution, whatever, generally tends to be the cognitive of these models. So if it's a larger model, but it's again for regularization, right? A very large model potentially overfit on some very small tasks uh, being regularized by reducing decision against the single task. And you seem to be getting like an opposite conclusion, right? So uh, when, when you're able to put analysis on what is unique in your setup that is maybe contrasting this traditional uh, understanding of compression of these models. Okay, this is a very, very good question. I suppose to repeat the question, right? Okay. Yes, yes. yes. So the question is, I just show that with compression, okay, the, the generalization capability of still supervised model degrade. Then the question is, this is violent, violent, this is contradict to the previous work. There are some work show that if you compress the model with less parameter model is less overfitting and become more robust. So why this happened? Uh, I do not have the answer. So this is why we need to do more investigation. So this is mess of, we have lots of things to do. So here for compression, we only try one compression approach is noise distillation. And in noise distillation, we truly observe that the degradation, the degradation of generalization after compression. But how about other approach? We haven't tried pruning, so we don't, we don't know what will happen. We haven't tried male Huber or sequence reduction model. We, we don't know what will happen. So this is something we should analyze. And probably, I, I, I think the previous approach, but I, I'm not know which paper, I don't know which paper you are referred to, but I believe they are not working on speech, right? They are on more general other domain. Probably speech sound very unique characteristic that make compression hard the generalization, but we don't know that. So this is something we are going to investigate. By the way, if you have some good reference about the interaction between compression and generalization, please send it to me. Thank you. Another question? Thomas? I have a question about the depth of model. Could you say something about the characteristics of the data that you need for that? And uh, maybe also the model data? Since uh, some of the uh, Okay, uh, I think you ask several questions, yeah. right? <laughs> Probably let me answer one by one. So the first question is about adapter, right? Yeah. Okay. So it is all about adapter, but yeah. Okay. Um, the characteristics of the data. Okay. So let me okay let me repeat the question. So for the adapter, let's talk about the characteristic of the data. So the data we are used now is the data of superb for mm -hmm. ASR. For ASR, what we use is libre speech 100 hours. So, but how we are going to profile this test with our data? How much extra parameter we are going to add for this test or for this test? No matter it's at the production test or no matter it's at the middle of the model like the answer. So, we are going to try to minimize the total number of parameters. We cannot hear you well. Positive yeah. and why they consider positive 
because the previous state of the art is very quality features to get the total result. So we have identified several tests, including one is stock hazard detection and one is symptom analysis. And we're going to try persuasive detection. They are all based on open problems available. And we found that in the previous work, uh, people who follow the technology sales provide model, they use cost to get very decent performance. So we believe those tests they are cost intensive, so it's good to test the capability of sales provide model for that required information. How do you predict this for speech to start out? Yes, speech to start out. Yeah, but uh, what kind of data would you use? Okay. For the way? Uh, yeah, sorry, that my computer okay. shut down. I, yeah. I think they can hear you okay now. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, but what I want to do is show my slide because oh. I'm on the slide. Okay. I, right. Then go ahead, switch back. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, but I I, I already put it. Uh, I already charged my laptop, so it should be fine. So just wait a few seconds until it is open. Uh. Okay. So let me go to the slides for positive. And here I add the Copus we are using. A screen share with the people. Okay. Uh, oh, I cannot jo join the zone again, but never mind. Okay. I just read the Copus. Okay. So for the star hasn't detection, the code data set we use is Mata. And for persuasive prediction, the Copus we use is. CNU PON and sentiment analysis, the corpus we use is CNU mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's more interesting when you, if you go to the two slides down and look at the combination of uh, downstream paths, right? So, you mean this one? Yeah, this, this is that. Right? Okay. We have the minimum path which would benefit from. Where you have to share the three phase sex model and the three phase speech model with the investment. So okay. We have a path from my story, is this one of your stuff that you don't get? Okay. So uh, there are several things. One is for past, so for, for, for this part, originally we are going to only conquer the uh, uh, spoken language understanding test, probably not necessarily in both quantity, but I totally understand your point. Here we have a model which can extract both speech information and the text information. So the optimal case is we have a test and it has to be solved by understanding and the understand the positive at the same time. That would be perfect if we have this kind of something test that we can, then this can be show the power. This can highlight the power of this model. The, under, the understanding the speech and semantic of the test at the same time. But I'm not 100% sure whether we have some good model for this. So one thing we are going to try, this is in our plan, is we can use those model on sarcasm detection or persuasive detection because probably in those tests, we need to understand the content and the quality at the same time to get the best performance. But I don't know whether this is the case. And actually, there's another finding here probably I can share with you is about semantic analysis. Uh, because we have analyzed the positive information in each layer, and we found that the first few layers contain more positive information than the last few layers. However, in sentiment analysis, we, we already have the experiment on sentiment analysis, and we try to analyze the weight of each layer. We, we, the, the, the downstream model is weighted down all the different layers and get the, weighted down the presentation for the downstream model. But we found that actually, the downstream model put more weight on the middle layer. But middle layer is not a layer for quality. So based on my previous experience, it's the layer for content information. Probably in those sentiment analysis tests, the model just wants to use the content information to get the result. It do not need quality, but we don't know. But one thing we can do is, we, if when do the weighted sound, we do not use the first few layer, only use the last few layer, and compare with use all the layer. Then, we can see where the positive information is helpful or not, or probably those tests only need content information. We don't know. This is something we're going to investigate. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Uh, thank you.